Hello again and welcome to this lesson on transformation geometry where we are going to start by looking at translations. Okay, so translations sounds a little bit uh, like I'm talking about language. Not really. Uh, well, no, I like not at all. Okay, we're not talking about translating anything. Uh, although translating actually does mean to move something. But before we get there, what do we mean by geometric transformations okay all that simply means is that we are transforming a geometric a geometric shape now geometric shape can be as simple as a dot or it can be any quadrilateral okay quadrilateral Oh, I can't remember how to spell that. Lateral, whatever. Okay, a, a geometric shape as simple as a dot or any complex quadrilateral uh, shape um, on the on the coordinate plane. On the coordinate plane. Okay, coordinate plane. So that means we are going to be working with coordinates. So if I have my coordinate plane, if I work with a geometric shape, something as simple as a dot, or any multi-sided object, we'll work with the vertices of that multi-sided object. We can even work with circles, okay, although we won't necessarily see much of that yet. But a circle will be defined by its center and its radius okay so what do we mean by translations of these geometric shapes well a translation is just so a translation is simply changing or transform <laughs> changing its position okay changing its position all we do is we just move the shape elsewhere on the coordinate plane okay so let's look at the theory behind this okay so here we have our coordinate plane there's any any coordinate I'm just going to choose any random coordinate call it X Y and then I'm going to say well let's take this coordinate and move it elsewhere well let's put it there okay now we've got a new set of coordinates let's call it x accent and y accent okay now what did we do to get from this point to that point what did we do with this coordinate to get to that coordinate well it's fairly simple we, we we're just going to break it up into two two steps we moved it let's say we did this we moved it upwards okay and we moved it horizontally okay so we moved it vertically and we moved it horizontally by moving it vertically we changed the x coordinate okay no I lie <laughs> okay by moving it vertically we changed the y coordinate sorry about that okay because it used to be there and now it is there that's the y coordinate that changed let's say it changed with q units okay it changed with q units up and then we moved it horizontally so it went from this place on the horizontal axis to axis to that place on the horizontal axis so we moved it let's say p units okay so what we have is that our new set of coordinates can be found by taking the old x value and adding p okay. adding p and taking the old y coordinate the old y coordinate and adding q okay now if p and q was instead being subtracted it would be a different story in other words if I subtracted P units I would have been going in that direction and if I was to subtract Q 
two units from y, I would have gone in the downwards direction. So what we have now is the following, that if I have that my, my new set of coordinates is given by x plus p, comma, y plus q, then if p is positive, then I'm moving in the positive direction on the x-axis, so moving to the right, to the right. And if I have that p is negative, I am moving to the left. Okay, so obviously if P is 0, I am moving to the nada. I am not moving left or right. Okay, how about Q? If Q is greater than 0, then that's now messing with the Y values. In other words, we're moving this thing up or down. If it's positive, we're obviously moving it up. And if Q is negative, we're moving it down. Moving it down. Okay, and this is kind of like a general rule for the transformation, but uh, a, a more exact, well, let's, well, what it is called actually is called the transformation rule. The transformation rule for a translation looks as follows. T represents that we are working with a transformation on x, y. And then we have a little arrow. And on that arrow, we can indicate what type of transformation we are working with. In this case, we are doing a translation. Now, this is not necessary to do that, but it can just be a little bit of extra information added to the transformation rule. Okay? And how, how do we do this translation? Well, we took x plus p, and we took y plus q. Okay, now this is called a transformation rule. It looks a little bit familiar to what we've seen before when we were doing functions. If I have a function, okay, then I would have an ex uh, function fx is equal to expression in terms of x okay and a function is a rule that assigns one value from one set to one value from another set okay so it's a rule this is a rule and this rule is applied to x and when that rule is applied to x, we find a value y. Okay, so it's a value that assigns a rule to a value from one set. So x comes from a collection of numbers, and it assigns it to a value from another set, y, which is a, connect, a collection of another set of numbers. Okay, this is similar to that. This does not mean t is multiplying the uh, coordinate x, y. This means T is a rule that transforms the coordinate x, y. Okay? And that transformation, and we don't use an equal sign, we use this right arrow. That transformation is a translation which we may write or may not write on our arrow. And it's described by the following. So let me give you an example of a transformation rule that is a translation. T, x, y is translated, I'm not even going to write it on there, x plus 1, y minus 3. Now looking at this transformation rule, I can tell you exactly what happened to every coordinate that this transformation is being applied to. Okay, It moves, one unit is added to every x, which means it moves one unit right okay to the right let me put that in to the it moves one unit to the right and it moves three units downwards 
downwards. That is what the negative 3 on the y does. Okay? It, I, I think it's very simple, so simple that it might look complicated, but it's not. Okay? Uh, so if you didn't get that, just go through that uh, once again. Let's, let's apply this to a specific coordinate. Let's apply that to the coordinate, let's say 5, 5 okay, is a coordinate. So if we do the transformation to coordinate 5, 5, I take 5 plus 1, 5 minus 3, and I get equal, that's equal to 6 comma, what, 2, okay, so this used to be my old coordinate, after the transformation that was my new coordinate, okay, so the before, okay, the before coordinate, let's draw a little picture of before, okay, there is my before picture, okay, is called the object, <laughs> okay, is called the object. The after picture here we go, here's our after is called the image okay so this is the object and this is the image and usually we would refer to the if this was a point P we would talk of the image as P accent or if this was the coordinate the objects coordinate usually the image would be X accent Y accent that's usually how we just refer to the object in the image but it might differ uh, from from one textbook to another or from one author to another or even from one question to another so as long as you get that what the before coordinate is called the object the after coordinate is called the image it doesn't just refer to coordinates it might even refer to the whole quadrilateral that was called the object before and after the transformation after it's been moved it might now be called the or it is now called the image well let me stop there i'm uh, i'm just babbling at this point so i'll see you in the next video where we'll look at hmm, reflections i think see you there